Yeah. Okay. Welcome. This is our sandbox review meeting, a very special edition, so we can work through some of our backlog. And Liz, I'll hand it back to you. All right. Uh, anyone got any projects they want to talk about initially, or should we just start at the top and work our way through? Let's start at the top and work our way through with starting with Fab Edge, Fab Name. <laughs> It's only four months old. It's kind of, um, it was started in July this year. So it's pretty new. It does, for a four month old project, I have to say it has a, a, a decent, uh, you know, a little bit of traction, <laughs> um, but, but it's just very new. Yeah, it's got yeah, enough I, stars to make it onto the landscape now, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean it's it's got it's got a good number of stars for a four-month-old project, but stars are easy to game, so I, I don't know that I it's but it's got like 30 forks, which is so 30 people have pressed that I, button, but it's very new. Yeah. And I, I, I felt it, um they go, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I checked its uh, website. It seems open sourced by a, um, a small cloud provider, a cloud vendor in China. And uh, they actually, this project has a close relationship with Kubi Edge, uh, at least based on its documentation. Um, I'm not sure whether uh, it's more like a, a solution for Kubi Edge from my perspective. I'm not, I'm not sure if this relationship is, is a good for an independent project or it's more like a ecosystem project of Kubi Edge. You guys may also check his documentation. At least um, at first glance, it seems more like a solution combined with Kubi Edge. I think their roadmap mentions the plans to integrate with other Edge projects, like Super. Oh, uh, I see. Year. Yeah, this year. I see that. Yeah. Why do you want to contribute? Is We'd like to let more people benefit in the project so we can, we believe CNCF can help us to achieve it. That does slightly sound like marketing. Um, I would like to, I actually prefer if they have support for more than one um, age solutions and then move to CNCF. Um, and I'm not sure if it was the current status for them, but it made me feel safe if um, they have support for multiple edge solutions as they claimed in readme yeah either that or it decides it's part of cube edge yeah how does something like cube edge cope with networking sorry what but i'm just wondering if there's any reason why oh I mean, I, I don't know enough about edge networking to like, it, it may be a bit of a rat hole. I think the I'm just workers on, on, on isolating networking, which is um, common in IoT or edge user cases. I believe Kubi Edge has some native uh, features uh, regarding to this, but they are more like, you know, um, a specialized workers on this field, uh, just like, you know, Kubernetes has flannel, but there is Calico, which can bring more values to, to the project. I think this is their focus and position. Mm. That's why I think if you are, you know, a more like the edge focused networking solution, I hope that they can support multiple edge, edge control plan as they claimed instead of just the one. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I must say, I was really, I was struggling with this one a little bit. So I, I was, I'm, I'm wondering if it might make sense to have the network uh, tag take a look at this. Yeah, exactly. Know. Yeah. Yeah, so have the network tag take a look, maybe ask them if they believe they're a standalone project or should perhaps be part of Cube Edge. Or the third yeah, they, being maybe yeah, support they more than one edge the, project. Also they can help assess the technical merit and the and maturity as well. Uh, yeah. I mean I wonder if tag security might want to take a look too. I mean I 
it's IP sec channels with certificate based authentication, but like, how do they distribute certificates and key? I mean, how do they do key management? That's the hard thing with IP sec is getting keys to the right place and things like that. Uh, yeah, so just, I think that might be because that's more of a question of, is that done right? Whereas I'm, I'm still at the stage where uh, I don't quite understand done the point of this. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. Let we start with that then. Yeah. 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 I'm just writing. Um I could, my writing actually makes sense for you. Um yeah, but, but Amy, don't don't put tag security in yeah, okay. Yeah, that don't put fine. tag security down yet. Start with tag network. Yeah, I, th I think much yeah, we don't need to add the security requirement in as a gate for sandbox. I think this is more like, what is this adding to the cube native uh, to the cloud native network uh, landscape? God, where are all my words getting mixed up? Yeah. All right. Local host. Um, so it looks like there's some additional notes here. Is this since we spoke about it last week briefly? We didn't really get a chance to talk about it properly, did we? Comments in here. So. I'm still not convinced that we, well, sorry, I shouldn't have changed that on this screen. Um, how can I even go back? Did anybody get a chance to try this? No, yeah, I would like to. I'm mm. kind of interested in how it would... Okay, and they do say that they have the same goal as telepresence, which is existing sandbox project, but doing it in a different way. I suppose that different approach is doing it in an IDE rather than on the CLI. Uh, I don't think that's the only difference, no. Um, okay. uh, um, I think there might be some other architectural difference, but I need to take a, a look. Um, or I think they've decided to present it in an IDE, but I, I'm not. I'm not sure that that's the only difference. There's quite a lot of choices that telepresence has made and has been, you know, it's been reworked a few times, but there's there's a whole lot of networking choices and things. I think the biggest difference is listed in the explanation of alignment with existing CNCF projects field. Yeah. 
looks like they use the real cluster environment to test their changes versus telepresence creating sort of like a local environment. That makes me think all sorts of questions, but not necessarily that need to be answered before sandbox. <laughs> Uh, any other comments or should we vote on this one? All right, let's vote for Nagel Host. So votes came through. All right, so the next one is Curve. Distributed storage. They claim that they are faster than Ceph. I wonder what the trade-offs are. <laughs> I'm not a, I'm not an expert in storage, so I'm curious what. Yeah, and what is that based on? Faster, meaning what? I'm slightly concerned at the number of times they mention NetEase, which I think is the commercial entity behind. Is that true? Uh, no, Net is, is more like a, a end user. Uh, they are developing games or uh, entertainment businesses. Uh, they do have Net is cloud, but I don't see any relationship with this project with that cloud. So this okay. is quite to me. This might be a good project to have uh, present at uh, Tag Storage. Yes. Yes, yes, I, yes, I, I think so. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. it's like a very to know what technical criteria. forecast. Yeah, yeah, this is a very technical forecast thing. I think I really hope that tax story can take a look to see if uh, what they are claiming is correct and to see if it's um, it's really faster than safe, of course. <laughs> and how it fits with other storage projects because we have a lot of confusion between how to explain the difference between our storage projects. Or... Yeah, plus one to that. Yep. Yep, agree. Okay. All right, the next one is, wait, Cube Armor. Oh, I feel like I've come across Cube Armor. I know I've come across Cube Armor. Uses some system call handling library from some company called Aqua Security. That might be where you've heard of it from. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who they are. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they've used tracing. That's interesting. That's what it says. Okay, and it's using BPFLSM, which makes a lot of sense. Well, it appears to use uh, any kind of LSM, which is kind of weird. If they were just using BPFLSM, the, the way I read that, I think they're just using the LSM interface. I, I was okay. Yeah, that would make sense. I might be wrong though. Oh, that, yeah. No, it looks like, no, I think you're right. There's another one that does look as though it's also doing App Armor and SE Linux enforcement. Wow. Good luck to them. It's 
So It appears to contain a full cilium in their org as well. <laughs> oh yes, they the the Acunox do, yeah. <laughs> They're like following me around. No. <laughs> <laughs> their presentation is very interesting too. Yeah, I was flicking through that. Yeah. Doesn't actually look all that old and it's got yeah, you know, 184 stars, which is something for sure. Uh, there is a credit that says Cube Armor uses Tracy system call handling functions developed by Aqua Security. Right. Yeah. They have a roadmap, but it's unclear where they are in the roadmap. Unless that means historical roadmap. And they said they're on release 1.0.1 .1 and the roadmap talks about 1.1 and then 1.0. And then it says keep that cube armor roadmap for future releases. I guess uh, it's a statement of intent anyway. I don't think, I, I think from the roadmap, they don't do all the things that they have in that presentation, but that's fair enough. Uh, the top two contributors in the Cube Armor, Cube Armor repo are from Korea. So, it's just to uh, bulk of the work, I guess. There's one sentence in the why do you want to contribute that most of it, I think, is very clear and, and sensible. But it says Acunox, the founding organization behind Cube Armor, works on a product that specializes in runtime security engines for cloud native environments. With all this, CNTF seems to be the right avenue for Cube Armor to reach towards. That does slightly sound like Well, I don't, I don't know why they've brought in Acunox, the commercial organization, into that. Maybe they meant to make it more open and it's just not well articulated. Should we ask for clarification? Like to get more contributors outside of the commercial? Yeah. I mean, it's open source already, but. Yeah, I mean, it's. It looks like it's always been open from the whole yeah. time. So, and I think they have been working with that policy working group for a while. 
whether that means they're actually getting contributions I, you know from outside of Acunox, i'm not sure but yeah it's, i mean there's a number of contributors but it's hard to tell where they're all from yeah um oh is there a um like a contributors or maintainers list I mean, there's 20 contributors. There is not a maintainers. In there. I think for sandbox it might be okay. Um, this increases the eBPF ecosystem. Uh, they do have some showing in the community stuff. Yeah. Any um, any other comments, or should we take it to a vote? Are we ready? All right, moving on to me target, meta get. It's a brave move to call any project something beginning with meta right now. <laughs> I suspect they did that before. Yeah, I think they must have done that. But right now they're going, damn it. Uh. This is quite an interesting idea to build a deliberately vulnerable infrastructure. It is something, you know, building vulnerable Building things to show vulnerabilities is sometimes a bit painful and awkward. So I actually quite like the idea. It's a very recent project with very few contributors. Ask them to go talk to tax security. Yeah, I mean, they, they would be a good thing to present and maybe they'd find some more contributors if it's interesting. I think that would be. It does actually have, I mean, I, I know stars should be taken with a pinch of salt, but 429 stars and yet only four contributors. Yeah, 82 forks and only four contributors. Lots of people forked it without actually doing anything, which is kind of weird. Yeah. Um, I think um, we need to also to check if this is a personal project or it's a company based project. I'm not sure about that because uh, it seems that there is only one active maintainer working on this project who claim to be a security researcher. Um, this is very um, unclear to me whether um, how he or his company can you know maintain this project in the long term? At least based on its documentation, I can not get this information. I can search it a little bit. It's also you know even in Chinese, um, it's not very. There not there are not not lot lot of content related to that. I must say, I I love the idea of the kind of 
CLI that it describes in this readme. I think that's great. I, I think I agree with Harry that this is not, you know, this does basically look like one person and I'm not sure that's enough, but this me targets CNV install a CVE. That's great. Mm. That's just yeah. Super yeah, speaker nice. state, I think it's yeah, it's really interesting. I just want to make sure it's um, you know a formal maintained project instead of a personal project. I, I searched yeah. a little bit, I found some blog in Chinese. Um it's mentioned uh, it's coming from a company which named Lu Um it's basically a security company in China. It's some it looks like it's it is an internal tool uh, from them and then they open source that this is as far as what I can see, but not a lot of information. I think we may want to have them to give the presentation to explain more about the background and their motivation and uh, their technology. Uh, if, if all of those things are great, I think this is actually a good project. I also think Maybe. that the project from just one maintainer shouldn't be a blocker for Sandbox because Sandbox is a place where you can find more, yeah, yeah, correct. more contributors, right? And yeah. And I also think it's a very interesting project, but if they want to get more uh, contributors, they should probably like, I see a lot of issues are filed in Mandarin, for example, and WeChat is yes. used for communication. So it should be probably more inclusive, like maybe Slack and issues in English. Yeah, exactly. I wonder whether we should encourage them to go and talk to tag security, partly because I think there are probably a lot of people in that tag who the same as me love the idea of like oh i could just install a vulnerability like that that would be so useful um and maybe that could encourage a bit more contribution maybe you know i feel like this is maybe one to sort of if yeah. if they came back in a few months time with a few more maintainers i think this would be right. awesome i mean it, it yeah because yeah, it's something that needs ongoing maintenance to add more vulnerabilities and, and yeah. so on so it's a question like how easy it, is it to actually maintain it over time and keep it up to date because it's not any use of it isn't maintained completely yeah right uh, i pasted a youtube video and that seemed nice too so uh, i i do want them to succeed the uh, we should get them to talk to tax security right now mm. Mm. yeah all right And see if what community interest be up needs. Yeah. All right. Uh, is that right? Conveyor is the next one. Open source migration tools. I feel like this is, yeah, there are people who've built entire businesses on doing this. We did that once, it was terrible, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we no longer have a business doing that, it's much better. Um, I mean, I guess, like, is is migrating legacy things cl a, a cloud native activity? I don't, I'm not sure it is. Um, so I, 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 I don't know, I, I question if it falls within the scope. There is already a channel in Kubernetes Slack, apparently, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, I mean, it's definitely a concern of a lot of users, but 
again, it doesn't really have a place where it fits in terms of the tags. Unless it's just data, then it could potentially go to the storage SIG as they were working on. But it's not. Yards. It's it's more application. It's more application migration. I think so. Not just data. Yeah, maybe app delivery. But yeah, I think <laughs> I think it's app delivery. But I'm not sure. That's why I question if it's kind of because I'm not sure that app delivery would necessarily want to be involved mm. in it. I mean, I, I do like that. I do like that pro problem. Yeah, I, I do like the fact that they want to build a community around supporting people in their journey to cloud native, which I think is in scape. But I don't know if I think the co community around that's more in scape than tools. I don't know. Well, I suppose if you need tools to move to cloud native, and if the mission is to make cloud native computing a um, uh, ubiquitous maybe this is part of that making things easier one thing that's interesting under the similar projects they talk about there are a small number of tools that may overlap with the conveyor projects these would be welcome to join conveyor if they wanted to come to the cncf so, you know, some, some overlap. Is there any danger that this is a, you know, falling into that bucket of opinionated, uh, you know, to what extent is this the project in its own right or to what extent is it pulling in other projects? Well, that's the thing, There's, there are, there's such a variety of non-cloud native applications that 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 you um, that it, by necessity thing there are mm. you know kind of an awful lot of things you might want to do. Yeah, I mean we 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 actually spent a few years working on this kind of tooling and um, ultimately decided it was not worthwhile, but. Um, but maybe that speaks to it being better as an open source set of tools then, or does that devalue the business proposition for? Well, I mean, I, I definitely, I mean, I think that, well, I know we stopped doing it because it wasn't successful for the customers, not because it didn't make us money. To be honest, but oh, um, interesting. maybe maybe they've. I mean, maybe they've found things that work better for the customers than we did. I mean, I'm which I'm, you know, it's a Red Hat project. I'm sure it's of value, but um, to customers, or it wouldn't have got to this stage. But uh, there's a, I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of question marks just in my mind about this the space as a as a whole and the what and what you're telling. What you're, what you're telling customers. That's why I think the community part of it is perhaps the most valuable piece as people learn yeah. how, how what cloud native is and what they have to change and learn to make it work. Some of the projects seem to be very OpenShift specific. Uh, is that right, Erin, here? Um, it has a little bit of that flavor. I, I don't think it's meant to be, but that probably the origin leaks over a little bit. Yeah, they, you know, they haven't specified anywhere that they want it to be, you know, non-specific to OpenShift anywhere. That would be my concern. Well, should we have SIG app delivery look at it and see if it's something that given contributions to make it more non-vendor specific, it would be useful? Yeah. It also doesn't say it is you know, only to be used for OpenShift. I think the intention is to open it up, but maybe just don't have the contribution. 
Yeah, it has inbuilt support for creating IAC artifacts for replatforming to Kubernetes slash OpenShift. Actually, move to Cube is for replatforming from Cloud Foundry, Docker Compose, or Swarm, which is or QBAML to Helm chart. So it's uh, it's much more specific than I thought. Yeah, I looked at it a long time ago. I have not looked at it recently, to be honest. I could take a little bit deeper dive into it if you want. You could push it to the next time. Hmm. Because that's that's a that's a specific set of things that you would arguably might say are, or in fact, already cloud native. They're just not Kubernetes. Um, we're not generic non. Not yeah, I do have a little bit of a concern where I see things like uh, OpenShift Migration UI and the OpenShift Migration Operator. You know, is it kind of the overall project is intended to make you or to make it easier for you to transition to a variety of cloud native platforms? So far, so good. But is it in practice more advanced for OpenShift? And is the end result there, you know, it nudges people towards OpenShift rather than Kubernetes. Yeah, I can see your concern there, Liz. Maybe so we can... push it back with the yeah. comments yeah. as such. Yeah. Okay, I'm fine with that. Uh, are we, can we provide some clear guidance to them on exactly what they would need to do? Uh, I feel like just kind of saying, hey, this is too OpenShift specific might be too vague. I wonder if this is worth having a discussion in a TOC meeting, really. Well, maybe that's a big step, but uh, yeah, it might be worth inviting them to present and yeah, kind of understand I mean, what their plans are. I mean, we could start with with tag app delivery, correct? Be consistent with the other project recommendations and have and them. we can tell tag delivery app delivery what to look for, right? Um, is it specific to OpenShift, yeah. are there things that can be, that will work out of the box with regular Kubernetes, that kind of stuff. And 75% of the people associated with the uh, org are red hatters. The, the, the MIG controller appears to just be for migrating between different OpenShift versions, mm -hmm. which is very specific and not at all what I thought this project was about. Uh, so in the meantime, I think Erin can back channel also to the folks and say, um, uh, when they are talking, speak to it during their presentation to have delivery, Erin. Yeah, I don't know given that I don't live there anymore, that I have any more information, but I can certainly go find out and make sure it's well understood or, or if it's even worth SIGAP delivery. But yes, I, I will find out. I think SIGAP delivery is the right place to start and then go from there. Yeah. All right. Okay, top. K K eight. Uh, I assume we're okay to move on. Yeah. So K eight up is a Kubernetes native application which works as a Kubernetes. What? Okay. What does that even mean? Catch up. <laughs> is that how you pronounce it? Catch up. <laughs> Kate's up. Cats up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very good. Oh yeah, it, they did say catch up in their uh, index page. Oh, they do. Yes. Uh, it's very confusing, but it appears to be a backup. I think for doing backups, but it's the, the explanations are really bad. Similar to Valero, I guess. Sad. Yeah. I yeah, they're listed as one of the similar projects.
the, the description in the uh, spreadsheet really confused me because it doesn't actually say the word backup. So, yeah. Don't... <sighs> I feel like they may have filled in the form in a bit of a hurry. They said, please explain how your project is aligned with cloud native ecosystem. It aligns very well with Kubernetes and persistent storage projects. And then explanation of alignment. We don't see any overlap with existing CNCF projects. I mean, you could argue we asked the same question twice, but I feel like that. Hmm. They seem to have picked up steam recently in terms of uh, updates to the main repository. No, no, I was wrong. <laughs> what what had led you to to say that? And then uh, yeah, <laughs> I was just I didn't scroll. Um, to the right side. <laughs> 23 contributors. So far, everyone I've looked at has been, oh no, there we go. Lots of Zurich. Um, Oh yeah, VSHN is a the DevOps company, so I guess like a DevOps consultancy. That's interesting. Yeah, as far as I can tell, it looks like it only backs up PVC volumes. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Dims, but I think Valero does like application level backup. So this seems like a more naive solution. So far. That, you know more than me. <laughs> they, they, they so if the Valero does do application, yes. Um, they're, they're both built on Restic. They're both built on Restic, yes. Yep. But I think Valero goes a step further and allows for, I think, vendors to be able to somehow specify vendor-specific backups in addition to Restic. Right. And Valero is part of VMware, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think last we talked to Dims, uh, I think they were considering. Uh, yeah, I was supposed to get an update end of the year. So I'll ping them back um, early December. Didn't Valero, didn't a lot of people that contributed to that left VMware? I think it was kind of in a little bit of limbo if I remember right, sad. It looks actively contributed to at the moment. Yeah, I'm not aware. Uh, the team is staffed for sure. And even if we had attrition, uh, it got backfilled or okay. in the process of getting backfilled. Uh, I think right now uh, they are trying to split it into two things. Uh, and one of which would come to CNCF. That was the last set of discussions that I had with them. So, regardless of Valero, I think. This is uh, something probably worth having tag storage look at uh, to do kind of an assessment on how it fits into the overall ecosystem. And I think it'll be similar to the other storage projects where we need to come up with a strategy for how do we position if we have multiple kind of projects in this space. Uh, so far, we don't have any. So I think it's worth at least talking to tag storage and, and having them present what the technology is. Agreed on what the differentiator from it is. It sounds like it's yep. similar, but less functionality instead of. Yeah, I think the challenge right now for us is we can't really point to Valero since it's not technically part of CNCF yet. The only hesitation I'm having right now is we, we seem a few times today to have been saying, mm -hmm. oh, we should get 
a tag to look at this. And that does seem like we're setting a higher bar. You know, we, we seem to be slightly moving back towards the, you know, getting the tags to assess things before they go into sandbox. Do we have a specific reason why we think this? I think in the previous cases, we have had specific reasons where we need more information. But in this case, I'm not quite sure what, what it is we're trying to assess. I think we don't have any projects that fit this space or strategy in terms of storage. And that's why we'd like a definitive, like, but I, I, I agree that it, we are definitely saying that more than normal on the sandbox I mean, spot. So. I mean, no kingmakers, why don't we have this sandbox, have this project? And if uh, other projects want to join the sandbox, or incubation too. That's yeah. great as well. Yeah, I mean, that's like fair. This, this is a does appear to be a well maintained, long standing project with I agree users. Uh, unlike the ones we referred earlier, which were very new yeah. or we had concerns. Whereas this just has been around for a long time. Seems to be seems to have users. Well, yeah. and maybe Valero never applies. Yeah. I'd hope that wouldn't be the case, but we can't, maybe, use, maybe. you know, make a decision. Yeah, we can't, we can't. Happen. Maybe they get encouraged to apply because we put something else in and uh, and they're, they're now late. I mean. Well, certainly, you know, this project shouldn't be at a disadvantage because some other project hasn't applied yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yep, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Any other comments or should we take this one to a vote? How are we doing for time? We've got five more minutes. I don't think we're going to get through the whole list, but yeah, no, we're definitely not going to get through the whole list, but at least we've made some progress. Um, last call for any particular projects that we want to bring up that we think we could get through in five minutes. Uh, Cube RS, please. Cube RS, there we go. Rust, Kubernetes client and controller runtime. Wonderful. Um, so uh, the background here is um, we were looking to start uh, a client, a Kubernetes client, um, you know, generated client uh, for Rust. And uh, apparently this was already there. So during the process of, hey, let's open a new repository. Let's see who's in interested in trying to gather people. These people showed up saying, hey, we already have some stuff. And some of the things that we are uh, doing is already used by Crustlet and other places. So why don't we just uh, do that? Um, and then they were debating on whether coming to CNCF or joining a, the Kubernetes SIG API missionary. And uh, they realized that it is better to have an independent project. So there is a lot more focus from the CNCF side on Rust ecosystem and what they are doing specifically. So that's the background. Can and, you elaborate uh, a little more? Uh, sorry, I was gonna ask, can you elaborate more on what kind of the benefit of going with a CNCF project versus a Kubernetes sub project in this case is? Um, so uh, if they are part of like the SIG API missionary, um, SIG API missionary sub project, uh, you know, they don't really have an identity, right? Mm -hmm. um, because it's like hidden deep in, mm -hmm. Uh, Kubernetes hierarchy. Um, so they want to like bump up the usage of Rust in CNCF and be the, uh, the core which will be used by other Rust projects um, in CNCF. Um, Crustlet was the example that they were going for. Um, so they want, so it's generated code, Kubernetes API, mm -hmm. Plus, on top of that, they are doing the controller runtime equivalent um, as well. They're also used by Linkerd. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, we, we also use this project as well in our Rust project. So I, I actually agree with Deems. Uh, although this kind of thing looks like it's a, another version of Kygo, but it's really not focused on Kubernetes API machinery itself. It focuses more like the ecosystem 
benefits and integrations with the other existing CNCF project and the upcoming new project. That's why I also think it's um, better for them to be a CNCF project rather than a Kubernetes project. I, I don't think there is actually real value if they are sitting in a Kubernetes SIG because Kubernetes SIG focuses on Kubernetes API machinery itself instead of the wider ecosystem. Yeah, we are having uh, a terrible time getting people uh, to all the different language libraries, um, even within API machinery. Uh, you know, the Python one is still going on fine. You know, Java, Brendan <laughs> comes by now and then to update stuff, uh, but I think it's good to have uh, this set of people um, in a championing Rust in CNCF. I think the only concern I have with that is we have, I pasted a link to the Kubernetes clients, uh, GitHub work. All the other languages have something there. And so if we have like a one-off that's completely independent and a standalone thing right. that has challenges around, you know, discoverability and just consistency. Any thoughts on that? Um I'm not too worried, uh, Saad. Uh, they, they also generate code. Um, they do it slightly differently from the open API schema. So, uh, and they already have users. So it's not like we are starting from scratch uh, and there isn't anything existing. I, in fact, it's the other way around, right? Like if we start something and we don't really have people to back it up, uh, then it becomes like uh, a shell of something and which is going to be competing with QBRS and QBRS is already there, right? Um, okay, sounds good. Like, um, there, there'd be no reason why there couldn't be a kind of like um, almost like a redirection underneath that list of Kubernetes client that could point them to QBRS. Could yeah, that would be great. It just so it lowers the cognitive overhead if somebody hits that yeah. endpoint. So yeah. solve the discoverability issue. And um, was, was there any... I mean, is this sort of uh, the will of the Kubernetes steering committee as well, that it should be? Uh, the steering committee is not making a call here. Uh, this was uh, a decision by the QBRS folks. We okay. offered them the choices and they picked one. And okay, uh, so, I, so they're not, nobody's going to feel upset or that we're breaking no. the Kubernetes. Correct, yeah. No. Yeah, I just want to add, actually, this library is already listed in the... Um, community maintained a client uh, in this page with the uh, old name, which is uh, Clark's uh, who BRS, which is exactly this new, this project with a new name. So I think it's fine. Right. Yeah, there's long discussion I posted uh, the GitHub URL 2792. Any other questions or should we take that one to a vote? Let's do it. All right, I think that's all we're gonna have time for today, but at least we made pretty good progress on our backlog, I think.